Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you a solution for question 5 from the Jan 2012 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. Okay, so first up, we have a simple question. State two benefits of using computerized accounting processes. All right, so I have a simple answer for that as well. So two benefits of using a computerized accounting system are it increases the efficiency of storing and retrieving information and preparing reports. And it also allows for easier recovery of information in the event of loss if it's backed up, right? So, I mean, most of you all probably have at least experimented somewhat with some sort of spreadsheet package. And you can probably attest to the fact that it takes a lot less time to type out stuff. And if you know how to use Excel, you can copy and paste things very easily as opposed to having to write things out by hand. And again, even if it's not Excel and it's some other spreadsheet packages, I mean, those things are pretty crazy. It makes what we do here look very archaic, but we need to understand the principles before we use fancy things because we don't want to be using fancy machinery and not know how it works or the underlying principles in case something goes wrong because believe me things always go wrong right and of course it says it allows for easy recovery of information most of you all have probably had the experience if not of losing a copybook or maybe a textbook you probably had some files disappear from a computer or you had it saved on a flash drive and the flash drive failed. That's why you should have multiple backups in different places, both physical and in the cloud. Okay, so those are two benefits of using a computerized accounting system. If you can think of any other benefits, please leave them in the comments section below so we can get a nice big list and we can share information and grow together. Okay, let's take a look at part B to this question. Alrighty, so it's saying that we need to identify the type of source document which would be generated in each situation, one to five outlined below. So these are the five items here. Let's take it one by one. So a customer paid his account in full. Okay, so if a customer pays us, we issue a receipt, a cash receipt. Next, a customer returns some of the goods previously bought on credit. So that's gonna necessitate a credit note. Thirdly, the landlord was paid this month's rent by check. So you can have a diff couple different options here. You can have the actual check or the check stub. The slightly more technically correct term is the check counterfoil. Okay, what's the fourth item? We have a supplier informs his customers of additional charges on goods already shipped. Well, that's going to require a debit note. And the last item here is goods were sold on credit to a customer. Well, that's a relatively simple one. That is just going to be a sales invoice. Okay, now if you disagree with any of the items I've put here, or if you have alternatives, please leave them in the comments section below so we can get a discussion going and again, improve our knowledge together and grow together. Okay, let's take a look at the last part, part C, a cash book. All right, so we have Farnham Enterprises has an overdraft balance of 13200 and cash in hand of 2890 at the beginning of the month. On the cash book page provided, enter the following transactions. Okay, so I'm going to show you all the transactions. And this is the list of transactions here. We have purchases of 2450 by check. Now, instead of reading through all of these and discussing them, let's just pull up the cash book and we're going to go through these transactions one by one so I don't have to do double work. Okay, it's going to be a bit more efficient and make this video a little bit shorter as well. Okay, so this is the format I'm choosing to use for the cash book. It's a three column cash book. We have the discount column, the cash and bank column on both sides. Of course, on the debit side, you have discounts allowed. On the credit side, you have discount received. Okay, so let me actually just put particulars because I'm seeing particulars here, but it was particular there. All right, so the first thing we're going to put in are the balances. So, of course, we have the first line here, the overdraft balance of 13,002. Now, an overdraft is a situation in the bank where you've spent more money than you've had. And you may be asking, how is that even possible? How do I spend more money than I have in the bank? Well, remember, the bank likes to make money and they make money by making loans, by lending money. So an overdraft is what you call a prearranged facility, a borrowing facility from the perspective of the borrower or a prearranged lending facility from the perspective of the lender, right? And what it allows us to do. So basically we would have had to have signed documents stating that we promised to pay back any amount spent over our balance because basically what is happening is the bank is lending us the money to spend if we spend more than we have. And of course, then what happens is when we owe somebody money, 
that's a liability and that's going to have a credit balance. So the opening bank balance is actually going to be on the credit side of the cash book, as you can see here. May 1st balance brought down 13,200 under the bank column on the credit side. Now the cash balance was 2,890 and cash is an asset and assets usually have debit balances. Okay, let's start populating the cash book with the trans information for the transaction. So on the third, we have purchases of 2,450 paid by check. So purchases by check, that means that we're spending money. If we're spending money, it means that we're going to have less money. So our asset of bank is going to go down. And to record a decrease in an asset, you're going to have to credit the asset account. So you're seeing here on the credit side, purchases 24.50 on the bank. Okay, what's the next item we have? Well, we kind of have the opposite, a cash sale of 5,800. So when we make a sale, money is coming in, which means our cash is increasing. Cash is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, we have to debit the asset account. So you're seeing it here. On the six, we have sales. And on the cash, we have the amount 5,800 on the debit side. What's the next transaction? Oh, we have a long one here. So it says we paid XYZ Corporation for an amount owed of 4,000 by check after deducting a 10% cash discount. So we're going to find 10% of 4,000 and we're going to subtract it from the 4,000. 10% of 4,000 is 400. 4,000 minus 400 is 3,006. Now, if we paid XYZ Corporation by check, once again, we're going to go on the credit side under the bank column. Check means bank was used. And again, if we make a payment, the amount of money we have is decreasing. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're seeing on the bank, on the credit side here, sorry, I'm trying to highlight. Okay, <laughs> on the bank, on the credit side here, we have 3600 and the discount received figure is $400. That was 10% of the 4000 all right? Okay, next transaction, another relatively long one. So it says here that K. Clarkson paid his account of 1900 by cash. Farnham has allowed him a 5% cash discount. So, again, usually we'll find 5% of 1900 and just subtract it. So, 5% of 1900, if it was 95, 1900 minus 95 is, I think, $1,805. So, if K. Clarkson paid his account, it means he's paying us. We are Farnham, right? So we're receiving money, which means cash is increasing. Cash is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, we have to debit the asset account. So you're going to see that here. On the debit side, under the cash column, you're going to see 1805 from Clarkson. And you're also seeing 95 because that was a discount we allowed to Clarkson. Okay, what's the next transaction? On the 18th, I'm seeing that we deposited 4,000 of cash on hand and bank. So this is a contra entry. What that means is that it's affecting both cash and bank at the same time and for the same amount. If we deposited cash in the bank, it means we're putting money in bank. If we put money in bank, the bank account is going to increase. Bank is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, we have to debit the asset account. So you're seeing on the 18th, on the debit side, on the bank, 4,000 being put in. You're seeing a C under the folio column, which, which indicates it's a contra entry. And of course, the corresponding credit has to go on the, sorry, well, obviously it's on the credit side, but it will go under the cash column. So on the, under the cash column on the credit side, you're seeing 4,000 and it's coming from bank and the C in the folio column is indicating that it is a contra entry. Okay, what's the next transaction? So I'm seeing here, it's saying Benko's Enterprises paid 3,610 by check after taking a discount of 5%. Right. So you see how they put after in capital letters? That means you have to do a kind of reversal. So in the previous questions where we had transactions or where we had discounts, we multiplied the percentage by the figure they gave us and then subtracted that figure that we got when we multiplied. But here, what they're telling us because of this word after, they are implying that the discount has already been subtracted. And this is the figure after the discount. So what we need to do is we actually have to find out, well, how much is the discount? So we have a little bit of backwards we can do. So first of all, the first thing is if Benko Enterprises paid us, it means this transaction is going to go on the debit side. Now, how do we find out? Now, and the 3610 is the actual amount received. So in the debit column, right? So let, let's populate it and I'm going to explain it thereafter, right? So under the debit side, or on the debit side, under the bank column, you're seeing 3610 from Benko Enterprises and you're seeing the discount allowed is 190. So how did I get that? Okay, so you have a couple of different ways you could do this, okay? One way is if we recognize that the 3610 is 95% of the original amount. 
Why is it 95%? Because there was a discount of 5%. If you take 5% away from the pool, you're left with 95%. And that is what was paid to us. 36.10 was 95% of the pool. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 36.10 and divide by 95%, 0.95. And we're going to get a figure of 3,800. Now, if you find 5% of 3,800, you're going to get 190, which is the discount figure. And you could always check it back. Find 5% of 3,800, that gives you 190. Subtract 190 from 36, from 3,800, sorry, you get 3,610. Okay, so that's, that's relatively the easiest way I can explain it. The other way to explain it, again, is uh, a little more complicated, but it also gives you the percentages. So remember how I said 3,610 was 95% of the amount paid? Right, because if we took out 5% from the original amount paid, we're left with 95% of that amount. So the other way to do this is to put the 5 over the 95 and multiply by 3610. So it's like you're scaling down 3610. You'll take 3610 and divide by 95 and then multiply by 5, which is the same thing we just did. It's just in a slightly more efficient manner. All right. Anyhow, let's check out the next transaction. Just a few more to go. So on the 23rd, it's saying we paid insurance 910 by check. And on the 25th, we are paying wages 4710 by check. So we have two check payments, both of which will go on the credit side, right here under the bank column, because we know when we make payments, we are decreasing the amount of money we have in the bank because it's a check. Bank is an asset. To decrease an asset, you have to credit the asset account, as you can see here. And the last transaction on the 30th of May says that there were drawings of 3500 in cash. So drawings is where the owner takes any resource, in this case cash, for his or her personal use. That means that the cash of the business is decreasing. Cash is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're seeing that here, 3,500 under cash, and it went to drawings. Okay, so now is the fun part. We have to balance off the account. So let's deal with the cash column first. So for the cash column, we're gonna add up the figures on the debit side, then we're gonna add up the figures on the credit side, and we're gonna subtract. Right now, it looks clearly like we have more money coming in on the debit side than we have on the credit side on the cash. So we're going to have a balance carry down on the cash of two thousand nine ninety five. Right now, for bank, we only have about seventy six hundred and ten dollars coming in, but on the credit side, the balance at start was already thirteen thousand two. So we're going to have a balance carried down from the debit side on the bank column of seventeen thousand two fifty. Now, of course, when we total the columns going down, what's going to happen is we're going to see 10495 under the cash column on both sides and 24863 under the bank column on both sides. Now, the discount columns are not balanced against each other. These figures, the totals, are put into the discount allowed column and the discount received column, respectively, in the general ledger. Oh, and of course, don't forget to bring down your balances. The Cash figure will be brought down on the debit side because cash is an asset and assets usually have debit balances. Whereas bank is still an overdraft. Overdraft is a liability and liabilities usually have credit balances. Okay, there you go. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the Jan 2012 POA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some free POA handles that you might find useful. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.